Hey y'all, just a quick video today I want to give a tip about mixing synthesizers and early reflections. Full disclosure, this is an adaptation of an idea I saw in a 1997 video by Bruce Swedeen. I'll link that video in the description, but since it's a VHS rip post on YouTube, I can't guarantee the, how long that link will be active. The basic concept here, though, is that synthesized instruments, unlike real instruments or even sampled instruments, are comprised of absolutely 100% direct sound. Think about that. These synthesized instruments have never existed in the real acoustic world until they're played back, as opposed to a guitar which is recorded in a room, for example. In a lot of situations we try to get as much of that direct sound as possible from the guitar without any of the room sound. Again, that's going to depend on your recording goals, aesthetics, and things like that. But regardless, some information about the space is sneaking in there. Now, some of this information about the space is the reverb the sound that happens after the direct sound has stopped. Reverb is a huge subject which we could spend an enormous amount of time on. People dedicate their lives to studying reverb, designing reverbs, but I'm just going to dip my toe in gently here and say one approach to thinking about reverbs is to divide early reflections of a reverb and the late reflections of the reverb tail. So I've talked before, reverb is basically the sound bouncing off the walls and all the surfaces in a space you're in. The more it bounces, the more distance it's traveled to get to you, the more possibilities part of that sound has been absorbed, the quieter it is, the fewer higher frequencies. And so the early reflections are the reflections that happen up to about 100 milliseconds after the sound. And so since these have only bounced off one or two or three surfaces, they haven't traveled as far and they haven't had as much of their sound absorbed. People argue that these early reflections really give us a sense of what the room is before we get the reverb tail, which is all of these late reflections mixed together, which is more of a blur. Again, there's way more to dig into with reverb, but for our short conversation today, let's keep it at that. So we can take particular care in crafting these early reflections of our synthesized sounds because they have never existed in this real space. One way to do that in the way in the Bruce Swedeen video is he actually plays the synthesized sound out of speakers in the space and records it on stereo microphones. Then I think he says he mixes it 80% direct sound, 20% that recorded sound. And in that way he gets some of this character of the room into his recording. And so what I do frequently with synthesizers is I will send the sound out into the studio or a room, you don't really need a studio, but a big room, and then mic the room to get the early reflections and some acoustic support, true acoustic support to the sound, and then add back just a little bit of that microphone, uh, the acoustic support to the direct sound, and it tremendously expands the quality of the synthesizer. That's a great idea. I've done that before. You can have a lot of fun recording synthesizers in bathrooms and things like that. Um, playing and re-recording synthesizers in bathrooms, that is. But we could also use a plugin and isolate only the early reflections. So I've got a Logic project that I have set up. This nifty case track is from my Eurorack. This is a recorded audio from the Eurorack direct in, right? So it wasn't recorded from speakers at any point. And you can see I've got two sends in it, one bus two here. That's my global reverb. So this is our, our longer reverb. And then I've got bus three, which is my early reflections. What we're gonna be doing here today is pretty subtle. So grab your headphones or get on a good set of speakers because this is not a massive obvious effect. This is a, a subtle dimensionality that we're adding to the tracks. Okay, you can hear that long reverb tail after that. That's actually my global reverb here, so I can mute that. Okay, it stops pretty much immediately. So now the only thing that's happening is this early reflection. So let's look at this. You'll notice I EQ my reverb. One doesn't have to necessarily EQ as severely as I do, but as a bassist, I'm obsessed with bass frequencies. All right, so this is Chromaverb, which is the built-in reverb in Logic these days. But you can apply this to anything that lets you affect early and late reflections separately. Where you find this in chromoverb is under these details, right? And so here, there's an early late slider. So I had that all the way 100% early, 0% late. 
So I've just made a preset here that's called Early Reflections Only, and I chose, uh, did some EQing, and I chose some of their settings of rooms. It doesn't really matter what you choose there, but the main thing is that all the way early. All right, let's give this a listen. I have the Nifty K soloed. I have my global long reverb muted, and the early reflections on bus three. Uh, I'm gonna toggle these on and off and we can hear the difference. Starting now. <laughs> What do you think? Does it sound better with those in or out? Well, that's an aesthetic decision, of course. But what's good about these early reflections is they don't have the long tail of a regular reverb, which means if you don't want that long tail, you can give life to something without muddying up your mix. Now, in this particular case, I did like that long reverb. So I added that in too. But notice I have that EQ differently, so I can set up that tail to sound different. All right, let me know what you think. In the meantime, I'll unsolo that and let this play us out. <laughs> 